For many, this already feels like a brutal recession. In fact, others believe we're entering a depression. But at least in one respect, it may not be as bad as you perhaps think. To understand why, one needs to understand how a recession's severity is measured. Once we have a better idea of the severity, then we can start thinking about what's next. So, let's take a look. According to Economic Cycle Research Institute, or ECRI, you have to look at the three Ds, depth, diffusion, and duration. I'm sure that you all have the feeling that in terms of depth, this recession is very deep. As you know, about 26.5 million people have lost their jobs. That's compared with a total of 8.7 million jobs lost during all of the Great Recession. And it's not over. In a typical recession, there's the initial economic contraction which triggers losses, falling incomes, eroding sales, and then the economy falls into the declining feedback loop. This is fundamental to the diffusion of weakness across the economy and how it spreads like dominoes from industry to industry and region to region. In terms of diffusion, this recession is also severe, affecting a wide range of industries. But with the third D, duration, this recession could be among the shortest on record. Here's why. With economic activity plunging so deeply, even a slow, partial opening up of the economy would lift activity off those extreme lows. And if that's happening, and the positive feedback loop starts, the recession could end in the summer. That would make this one of the shortest recessions on record. While that sounds a bit too optimistic, the end of a recession is only the start of the recovery. But that's how the charts have looked since the bottom in mid-March. Well, at least until now. As I showed you all in a recent video, the VIX is trying to set a base. If so, it may spike again, which would mean another downtrend in the market. But the stock market contraction may not be that severe. And that's what I want to explore in our charts. So, let's go there. So here we're looking at the six-month daily on the spiders, the SPY, and again the 282.97 was the close on Friday. Now, we had that bottom here, and then we've had the uptrend up to this point here, and of course we had the top way back here. So looking at this chart, I told you that we're looking like we're in a topping process. But one thing that I haven't talked about is that this also looks like a cup and handle. Now we've talked about a cup and handle many times, but let's go over it again. Basically, you look at the chart and it looks like a cup moving on down with the base and then the rise back on up here. That's your cup. The handle is here where you get a slight sell-off on lower volume just a general sell-off in the price and then the market once it reaches another bottom and the rest of the sellers are out then it can base and head on up and that move you want to get above the cup which is probably in this range here so you want this sell-off to happen down here and then the stocks to rise and once it reaches that top of that cup here you buy once it breaks through. That's the breakout. Now, I'm not sure how low this handle is going to go. I'd like to see it maybe in the range of 260 to 280. However, it might fall a little bit further. If it falls further, that's still okay. The one thing that I don't want to see is it breach lower than that previous level there from late March. So we'll be watching that closely. But it is interesting that it's starting to show the couple handle formation. That's good. It's also possible that it might do a W formation, heading on back down here and then up and away. That's possible and it's still acceptable, at least in my terms. So we'll be on the watch out for the cup and handle or the W. And for today, that's Chew Dog Charts. Thank you.